weird. Well, so you, wait, you then be able to cast and then say that then the, we will actually reach this far, which means then yeah. the ring is out there. Uh, I think that that's maybe how they did it. Hmm. So you, wait, you then be able to cast and then say that then the, we will actually reach this far, which means then yeah. the ring is out there. Uh, I think that that's maybe how they did it. Hmm. But it would, I think it would make more sense if it was the center. Digiraw's dead. Yep. First this, this was a 2-1 lane, man. Yeah. This is a 2-1 lane, and, and he's just... You make one mistake up against the... the enough to be still a mid-game presence. Sniper, you need to juke right then for Fisher. Think about throwing down by Goddamn, but he also realized he's too far out of range for that to really work. Now the Fisher will be thrown at Clockwork, taking a little bit too much damage from the tower, and the Bristleback TPs himself very, very far in to cop two raids to the face. The back is at least in in, in facing Sun Rather, Sonico, he's got five core stacks on top of him. He's dead with that last little spray. Cheshire Cat's got no way out of this one, apart from maybe Battery Assault with the Rocket Damage. It is enough to get the kill. Well, there's not enough mana in here for the Earthshaker to go for another stomp, but with Manus moving up, he's going to try and turn him around here. Manus needs more movement speed. It's 12 seconds until he's got Stampede. God Dance moving over, and there's your Shrapnel. Slow him down and just double edge for the kill. No crowd shall At least PR was able to get some level of trade-off in that mid-fight. Yeah, I mean, they got forced into playing a lot of farm Dyer's role in the 15 to 25 minutes. Oh, power of hell race. They're up way too far. The hook shot up. Catch that too. Locks him inside the cogs with the blade mail up. You're already going to have the sniper dead. you got the, the, the centaur got popped very, very quickly. The fish is going to be thrown as well by sneakers. So they can slow down the bristle back as well. Three euros lost. This with the agency model team. Big advantage and could just force down the middle lane now. Oh, yeah, except the fact they just lost that creep. Get like uh, his second item by 20, 25 minutes. We should just start with Manus, double hoof stomp, able to catch out both Sunra as well as Sneako, or triggers the agency mortal brewmaster. No ulti available for him, so he will still go down. But Cheshire Cat, he was waiting for that sniper to come into position. With the blade mail up, there's no way that that centaur can battle up against him. Dread trying to go for the saving grace right now. But, well, maybe he can have enough with Goddamn returning back to the fight. Sunra towards the front lines, he's got all of his races back off cooldown again. So one long range and a medium should be able to kill off Dread. But he needs to get the timing right. There's your one long range. Nico could just turn around. He's got Totem Stomp, just use it and go for Dread. Okay, uh -oh. doesn't even need it. The Shadow Fiend just brings him down. One more Souls, throwing back the Bristle back, Radiant's buying more space here, Sneeko. While the rest of Dire Creep Wave bring down the tower. This Bristle back doesn't want to give up the Ghost. He's got three Quill Sprays over on the Shadow Fiend, but a Yule Scepter, a quick buy on the Blink Dagger as well, but yeah, they're gonna get away. Maybe not Sneeko until he picks uh, up a Fissure. Sure. And yeah. Oh, mistake he there. He only got one on the stun, which means he will die here. He's gonna earn charges. The movement's coming in though from the Brewmaster. He can blink clap and actually almost kill off Goddamn if he's got enough for it. There goes your clap already in the Brussels back and he'll TP away to safety. So the Rubik does still survive even though missing up that Fissure. Messing up the Fissure. Boom. And looks like we're already gonna swap, so they go for the SF and they got him down straight away. The Lich Holding is coming in, but Dread able to drag it up because he had the Stampede, but the Fissure dropped down by the Rubik. What else can he pick up right now? Pick him up and actually just throw Goddamn back to the other side of the Fissure line, close towards where he is. Cheshire Cat chasing after Dread, but he's not getting, oh now he is. He's close enough to get the Battery Assault kill. A Goddamn, one more Fissure. Rubik, he's got his Fissure back off cooldown, but just uses the Fade Bolt to finish the Earthshaker. So they take the top tower, and PR did all of that without having the SF really do anything in that engagement apart from his death ulti. Yeah. Ready to jump. He's going to try and steal Fissure right now. Couldn't get close enough. He gets swapped down and the Blink Dagger put instantly on the cooldown. Hope Stomp at least get the pick up over on the Centaur. But the Sun on the Brewmaster on the Ventral Spirit going to cause some problems. And now they go into the split. Who do they want? They at least want to bring the Bristle back out of place. Lich has a little bit more space. He does get assassinated and then Fission as well. More than enough damage to find these pickoffs. And the Five Relief Radiant also down for the count. So PR has lost all of their damage here. They couldn't bring Dyer's down the tower. tower. Cardi's is probably going to finish the job here. I actually know Urshik will get the denial as Cardi just denied. isn't strong enough. Significantly, but you do have a lot of damage that's indirect. Uh, wrestle. Right click. Pick up, throw down, look at look at Sunra. Instantly tries oh, to go over. the swap was actually really nicely done. This Requiem is going to do very, very little apart from now bring the Shadow Fiend back over to battle up against the Bristleback. He's slowed down a little bit, and now in comes the stun from that Earth Ruling. And Bristleback, one more attack from the SF. Almost not, but it's on the back end of it, so Sneeko kills securing. Getting sniped a little bit by Sniper. And Clockwork. Whoa! Cheshire! He did too deep! But the Razors, they're gonna kill off Goddamn and Cheshire Cat. Damn, this guy's got so many life points, especially when he's getting the mech support coming in from the Lich. Yeah, I mean, the, the mech support, but as well as like the Lich armor, makes him super hard to kill, especially. 
They're going again. A pick up, a throw down, wave of terror to return right now. At least Man's got himself a really good jump, but the Yule Center protects the SF for the moment. The Trangle's coming down. Remember, this is still the Agassi model on the SF. He got one last raise off the urn. will tick out Manus here. He won't survive that one. A Cat again, trying to go deep on the Sniper, who cannot really attack into that. That's a Blade Mount versus the Mask of Manus. Right, his Mask Manus wore off. But it was still a mask, a, uh, a normal attacking sniper up against the Blade Mount Cheshire. Radiance he was going to have luck with that at all. Attack. Opening target, and now he does actually hit the Centaur. The cogs come up, so you can't get the Bristleback in close, but the four star from the VS pulling it back out of the cogs, and wow, Bristleback just running into the fight. The Meg Charge is going to bring back a lot of the life points, and then you flick into Echo's head with a four fissure, double edge, and the Hulk Stomp. Hell raises, just with power raises, a new one. Even though they've got the Brewmaster split off, those Brewlings are having little to no effect. Cheshire Cast is trying to get himself out of this one. They realize the Earth Panda, that's the one they want. There's your Hulk Stomp again. And with the double damage on the Bristleback, the live points are four foot of, of Power Rangers. Cheshire Cat is running away, but I think they're going to lose Tier 2 and Tier 3 in mid, because only... Oh, well, Cheshire Cat's Cat. carrying the game. And, uh, he's going to be okay. Well, okay, I take it back, I take it back. The Creep Wave is going to be there. Battery Assault stopping Goddamn from getting an ability off. And he's got no way out of this one. Let's even get the Fissure off Cheshire Cat. He ran out of Battery Assault charges. So oh Goddamn can flick God. himself away to safety. The Rocket, nine life points. He'll survive That's Goddamn God. over on the side. The Fissure, even evades it from Taniko, which puts him in a horrible position for the Hulk Stomp. In How the is so much so lucky? Ah, man, he is just rubbing the bald head right oh now. Oh my he is God. So good. The RNG there of the Battery Assault. As well as Cheese, so he can't really kill the Sniper. Are they? Wait, what the hell? The Brewmaster, the Brewmaster preemptively pop the ultimate. Yeah, they actually walk in with the Storm Brewling and Shadow Fiend just initiates out. But where's your kills? Mantis, he's dropping low at the moment. He can't bail out to the tree lines and away, but a force up from Jessica Cat. He still takes the center to the end of the earth. One rocket. He's got Hookshot back off cooldown. Finally gets a pick up. There's a one for one trade off. The SF and Lich now actually going to make it a two up as uh, Rubik is able to mop up. The Vengeful Spirit at the back end of play. Assassination Cheshire Cat. He's got hook shot in one second time. He's blocked up by the Creep Wave. So we're able to really do anything else. Assassination from Sneako. He oh. wants to finish the Earth Shaker. Able to do it. The Sniper returning the kill. Able to pick up a triple as well during this engagement. They did lose a hell of a lot for... Unless it's for the Aegis timeout and he picks it up from the Dire Shop. Either way, this bottom racks. They're just sticking with objective-based gaming. They're beating through it. The mid-tier three towers under siege as well. Dyer's and Roger, he can't do anything. His ult is on cooldown for 18 up. seconds, and he has no team. Uh, he's going to blink in right now, but I feel like this is just throwing away Dyer's his life. Yeah, I mean, he went for the early... To, uh, he went Dyer's for the mid-game build, right? Agonims, which you don't see as much anymore. He's very much mid-game. More tank ability as well. Here comes that Brewmaster ult. He's coming in again. Who are they looking for? They want to take the Brussel back out of play. The Storm only really runs up, and then he comes back down again. They see an option to kill off Dread very, very quickly, but Get it's a 1-1 one -one support, support, support trade, and the Stampede stolen by the Rubik, but it's not giving him enough positional advantage. The Sniper just stands his ground, keeps battling it out. The Echo Sam comes in too, and the Centaur locked, controlled. Well, I mean, locking and controlling the Brewmaster. They lose four, and it's a GG call. Power Rangers will take the game 2-0 here. And Power Rangers, after two series in the group stage, the D2 CL still find themselves without a victory. Yeah, over a 12,000 gold lead and a uh, pretty big experience lead as well. Power Rangers just couldn't close out the deal. Too many mistakes, too many sloppy plays. Yep. Um, I don't know what what the deal is. They've really fallen off ever since DAC. I'm not sure if that demotivated them or what, um, but they certainly just aren't the team.